Welcome back to The Frame. I'm John Raby. Let's go back in time to the late 1980s. Three brothers, Edward, Stephen, and Charles Kyoto, are working as special effects animators in L.A. and making their own low-budget film. The result is Killer Clowns from Outer Space, released in 1988, a schlocky sci-fi horror comedy about a gang of murderous, clown-like aliens who take over a small town. They terrorize its inhabitants, trapping them in cotton candy cocoons and smothering them with pies. It didn't have much box office success, but in the 30 years since, it's become a cult classic. To celebrate the 30th anniversary, Edward, Stephen, and Charles Kyoto, along with composer John Massari, are hosting a screening at the Montalban Theater in Hollywood on Saturday, complete with a live orchestra. Frame producer Michelle Lance caught up with all of them to find out the killer clown's origin story. Hi, my name is John Massari, and I'm the composer of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The movie has a very simple premise. Clowns are supposed to make you joyous and uh, uh, make you laugh and be gay. Uh, However, these clowns will kill you and eat you. And they're from outer space. Calling all clowns, calling all clowns. This is JoJo. Are there any space clowns out there? (laughs) You guys, will you stop fooling around? We would have to be total morons to believe this clown invasion crap. If there are killer clowns running around here, then I'm Porky Pig. (laughs) My involvement in the movie itself is defined by one word, and that's love. That's, isn't that funny with the killer clowns from outer space? Love is the thing. Uh, the movie is born from imagination and creativity and originality. That's what drew me to it. At the time, Tim Burton had just, um, and, and by the way, the Kyoto brothers had, have worked for Tim Burton often, and he had done uh, Beetlejuice. And I thought, oh, this is the new wave of horror, comedy, bizarre, creative, and I said, I, I have to do this. This isn't what you think it is. Nobody stores cotton candy like this. What are you talking about? Of course it is. <laughs> Look. Ah! This is Steven. Um, I guess it all began, I was trying to think of the most frightening image I could imagine. And for me, it was traveling down a lonely mountain road, and uh, behind me, a car would appear, and as it's passing me, it would be a clown staring at me. <laughs> and that's as silly as the uh, the inception of Killer Clowns was. And yeah. this is Edward, and once you come up with that Killer Clowns from Outer Space, it, it kind of writes itself from there when you start to thinking about all the circus motif and opportunities to kill people in, in humorous, <laughs> deadly ways. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Knock my block off? This is Steven. Yeah, it, it, uh, while we were writing the script, which was five pages a day, we wrote the whole screenplay in a month. And uh, the idea was just to take uh, creative kills, we ended up calling candy-coated kills, and coming up with any kind of twist on a carnival or circus motif. So we thought, we sat around and wondered, okay, what could, what's a, a typical carnival thing might be a balloon animal. So we said, what can we do with a balloon animal? So then when we had the chase with the clowns, we said, well, let's let them have a classic bloodhound chase, but instead make it a balloon dog. So at every juncture, we would put a twist on it with a carnival motif. Um, Then there was the popcorn. Popcorn's a mainstay in circus. So we said, what can we do with popcorns? So we made them like the little baby spores where the -the jack-in-the-box clowns come from. This is it. Uh, The cotton candy, again, it's just got this, this pink fibrous stuff. Well, that naturally became a cocoon that you would get wrapped inside of it. Well, what happens to the human body once it's inside this sugary uh, covering that you would, you know, would cause you to marinate and start to dissolve? So. Yeah, so once, once you're dissolved, how do you consume it? Well, of course, a silly straw with all little curls on it. So it really was a really a fun process and evolution to just brainstorm between horror kills and circus motif. The task was to make something that didn't look like a man in a costume or a man in makeup. It had to be a monster from outer space, something not human, something alien. This is Steven speaking. This is an alien race that just happens to look like clowns. Uh, And they weren't supposed to be aliens that were dressed up like clowns. It's sort of like a species of slugs from another planet and their ornamentation just makes them look like clowns. 
and they're kind of rumored to be ancient astronauts who visited this planet a long time ago, which our tradition of clowns comes from. What the, the main thing was we wanted to avoid anything that a regular clown maniac would do. Our inspiration came from Wes Craven and um, The Nightmare on Elm Street. And even though it was pretty violent and stuff, what we liked is the aspect of dream kills, where it could be anything in your imagination in the dream world that could kill you. And that's what we modeled our killer clown kills after. Yeah, this is Steven. Something as obvious as a spaceship. We said, okay, what, what would the clowns travel in? So we figured, well, it would be like a big top circus. And then when the spaceship takes off, it literally was a big top. So that wasn't anything we thought of. It just kind of came out of, out of the process, the creative process naturally. So yeah. at the end, you have a big top spaceship. It was kind of funny. Come on. This is Edward. I mean, it's funny that the image of clowns prior to our movie in 1987 was pretty normal. Stephen King's It, Pennywise, the book had come out before the movie, but the miniseries came out after our movie. So we were really the first movie to give clowns, you know, literal teeth. That was our first film 30 years ago. Our movie really... You know, theatrically, it didn't it didn't do well. It wasn't well received at the time. But in the last 30 years, it's built up this incredible following. I mean, it's really become a, you know, the cult classic. And that's our show for this week. The Frame is produced by Oscar Garza, Darby Maloney, Michelle Lands, and Monica Bushman, with help this week from Jonathan Shiflin. Our interns are Maria Alexa Cavanaugh and Marcy Langren. And our engineer is Valentino Rivera. I'm John Raby. John Horn's back Monday. Have a great weekend.